Today we learned that the ShakeAlert 2.0 system by the USGS is available for schools, businesses, utilities, and some government agencies. To understand what this all means and how it works, joining me is Kit Miyamoto. We went to Mexico, and I remember Mexico had this kind of system in place. Can you tell me why California has taken so long in having something like this available? I think the reason is the uh, place like Japan or Mexico, there's the, uh, there are frequent earthquakes, much more frequent than we have here. So there's a public demand about the safety, the knowledge, and the information. Like personally in California, the last big one is really, what, 25 years, 35 years ago. And we're due a big one. Oh yeah, most definitely. During our lifetimes, we're gonna see some big uh, earthquake happens in California. How does this work? What does this mean for Californians? Essentially, the earthquake has two different motions. One is a P wave and an S wave. So when so. you capture the P wave, it triggers something and then that creates an alert that goes to the places that can prepare for it. That's right, before, before we shut that S wave. So like a place like Sacramento, it could be very effective because you know, the fault you know, rupture which can affect this area would be Bay Area or Vacaville and a place like that. So there's quite a bit of distance. So that means we have more time to prepare? That's right. Sacramento, that impact would be also great. If the big fault ruptures in the Bay Area, it's going to transmit certain energy. It will amplify certain buildings. For example, if the taller buildings or bigger buildings located in a soft soil, that will amplify the motion a lot. And Do we have a lot of those? Oh yeah, most definitely. Even if the fault rupture is hundreds of miles away, you're going to see some things there. That's what we saw in 2017, Mexico City. Soft soil. How do people know if they are living or working in a safe building? If it's anything built after 1980s, usually the California building code is pretty good. So uh, those buildings should perform okay. Any, like say, uh, concrete you know, structures built uh, prior to uh, mid-1970s, they're considered to be very dangerous buildings actually, especially like a bigger office buildings, commercial buildings. Expectation from a public or society is if you hire an engineer, like me, and design the buildings, people think it's earthquake proof. You know, for only so built California building code. But it's not like that. It's actually providing the minimum of life safety protection. And it's not legally required. That's right. Is there a guideline or somewhere online that people can go and know what kind of standards their buildings or office buildings were built on? Oh yeah, most definitely. If you go to the California Seismic Safety Commission website, there are quite a bit of information like that available.